In this video, we're going to look at the best Japanese middleweight 400cc bikes from the late 1970s. This is a period when I first started riding on the road, and having owned, or at the very least ridden, every bike featured in this video, I reckon that I'm just as well qualified as anyone else to comment on each bike. First up, we'll look at the two strokes, and first cab off the rank is the Yamaha RD400, which was first released to the public in 1976, and a bike which I personally owned. It featured very attractive cast aluminium wheels. I believe it was actually the first mass-produced bike to have these as standard equipment. It also featured another uncommon sight in the 70s, a rear disc brake. However, it was somewhat overpowerful for a bike of this size, and it was very easy to lock the rear wheel up. Another bonus was Yamaha's self-cancelling indicators. While its predecessor, the RD350, was probably the best middleweight in the early 1970s, the RD400's engine had a longer stroke, and it was moved further forward in the frame. These changes increased torque, and reduced the chances of the front wheel lifting under hard acceleration. Its engine was a 398cc two-stroke parallel twin, which produced 40 horsepower. Combined with its light weight of just 346 pounds, this gave the bike a top speed of 105 miles per hour and a quarter mile time of 14.15 seconds. Its handling and high speed stability was as good as anything else available at the time. I would rank this bike as one of the most attractive, better performing and most fun motorcycles that I've ever owned. The Kawasaki KH400 was a sleek and fast looking motorcycle, but it was more of a sprinter than a stayer. Riding one, you always just wanted to go hard and fast. Puttering around town just wasn't its forte. And as far as fuel consumption goes, it is by far the worst performer on this list. It might also surprise you to know that the KH400 is not the quickest bike on this list. Because of new pollution laws, the KH400 did suffer a 4 horsepower loss in power from its predecessor, the S3. But its inline three cylinder two stroke engine still produced 38 horsepower. And compared to all the other bikes in this list, the Kawasaki does feel the most powerful to ride. But in reality, I think it was more of a case of having almost no power available and then all of a sudden having full power as the bike had a very narrow and steep power curve. Top speed, if you were game enough that is, was 100 miles per hour. Its best quarter mile time was 14 and a half seconds. The Kawasaki is also the worst handling and the worst braking bike on this list, but neither of these things detract from its appeal in any way, shape or form, because the Kawasaki 400's power came on so fast it is probably one of the most exciting bikes that you could ever ride. The Suzuki GT380 is another bike which I personally owned. It visually looks bigger than all the others, which I think is mainly due to its four exhaust pipes and to a lesser degree, its RAM air system. Although it is the heaviest of the two strokes, it didn't weigh any more than the four strokes from the same era. It also felt bigger to ride and not quite as nimble, which was probably due to its 19 inch front wheel. Its inline three cylinder 371cc two stroke engine produced 37 horsepower. Initially, it feels more mildly tuned than the others. It's a bike which is happy to cruise at low RPMs, which is pretty unusual for a two-stroke, but once you got into the mid-range, it was still a very quick bike. Its top speed was a tad over 100 miles per hour, slightly faster than the KH400, while its quarter mile time was slower at 14.9 seconds. At the time, Suzuki claimed 13.3 seconds, but I could not find one period road test that was even close to their claim, 
It just wasn't that quick. Its handling was excellent for the era, but it does without doubt have the absolute worst cornering clearance of every single bike on this list. The mufflers scraped very easily, especially during fast bumpy corners. Its seat was very nice, being pretty long and wide, making it a good choice for carrying a pillion passenger. The bike featured Suzuki's digital gear indicator, which at the time, many road testers deemed it as being an unnecessary gimmick. But I always found it handy and quite a nice novelty because nobody else had one. The Yamaha XS400, while it looked very similar to Yamaha's more popular RD400, had a single overhead cam, 392cc, four-stroke engine. So you would think it might have been a bit more sluggish, right? Wrong. Sure, its engine produced four horsepower less. And while its top speed was also less, at 96 miles per hour, it would amazingly cover the quarter mile in 14.53 seconds making it one of the quickest bikes on this list. I know, I didn't believe it either, but it is a testament to the even power delivery of the Yamaha engine, because I remember when riding one, it certainly never felt that quick. It had all the same features as the RD, self-cancelling indicators, alloy wheels, front and rear disc brakes, but it also had an electric starter, and while it proved to be a reliable bike, it did suffer from excessive vibration. Don't get me wrong though, I do like bikes that shake and vibrate, but there's good vibrations and there's bad vibrations, and the XS400 definitely has the bad kind. This fact alone makes it by far my least favourite bike on this list. The Kawasaki Z400 was designed to compete with Honda's CB360 in the middleweight commuter class. To smooth out vibrations, its four-stroke 398cc single overhead camshaft parallel twin had a 360 degree crank, which meant both its pistons rise and fall together. This combined with Kawasaki's counterbalancing system made the bike very smooth, making it very suitable for short distance touring as well as commuting. One of my mates bought one brand new, and it always performed faultlessly. It handled well, sounded great, looked fantastic, and with its wide plush seat, it was very comfortable. However, the engine, although very mechanically quiet, compared to other four strokes of the era, was somewhat sluggish. It produced 36 horsepower, and it wouldn't even pull the tonne. And with a quarter mile time of 15.4 seconds, it is the slowest bike on this list. The Suzuki GS400, introduced in 1976, was one of Suzuki's very first four stroke motorcycles. It too featured a counterbalanced 398cc twin cylinder parallel twin engine. But even though it featured something that none of its competitors had, that being double overhead camshafts, this did very little to give it any performance advantages producing the same 36 horsepower. Its top speed was exactly the same as Quacker's Z400, although its quarter mile time was better at 15.1 seconds. The bike weighed 370 pounds. It did, however, feature Suzuki's digital gear indicator and an electric starter. Overall, the GS400 was an outstanding effort for Suzuki's first venture into producing four-stroke motorcycles. While it may not have been as outstanding as some of the other bikes on this list, it was a very solid and reliable motorcycle, and very similar to the Kawasaki Z400 in many ways making it difficult to choose between the two. The XS400 
The Honda CB400F is worlds apart from any other bike on this list. It featured a longer, beautifully shaped fuel tank, and under the word Honda was written the words Super Sports. The first model was available in just two solid colours, red and blue. With its riveted on, sporty looking seat cover, flatter and narrower handlebars, and a very high quality, stunningly curved 4 into 1 exhaust system, it certainly looked very classy. Its engine was a Revy 408cc single overhead camshaft inline 4 cylinder 4 stroke. When I say Revy, I mean it. This bike would easily rev to over 10,000 RPM. It produced 37 horsepower. And because it had a very even power curve, it actually never felt that powerful to ride. But it was indeed fast. Its top speed was 105 miles per hour. And with a quarter mile time of 14.68 seconds, it is one of the fastest bikes in this segment. The bike was pretty short and compact, with a steep steering angle, meaning it was nimble. And while it was very comfortable to safely lean over in turns, it was also very happy to remain in a straight line. The ignition switch also incorporated the steering lock, which was a very nice novelty back in those days. The bike was exceptionally smooth, sophisticated and a real nice looking machine. The only negative thing that I can possibly think of to say about the Honda 400 Supersport was that the muffler was too quiet. It was an excellent motorcycle and for a young bloke in the 1970s, it was a chick magnet. Or maybe it was just me, I don't know. But unfortunately, I doubt that was ever the case. So, in summary, while all of these bikes were very good bikes, the quickest accelerating bike in this segment was the Yamaha RD400. The fastest in top speed was a tie between the 400 Supersports and the RD400. The best handling was again the RD400. The best choice for short distance touring, particularly two up, would be a toss up between the Z400 and the GT380. The best looking bike, in my opinion, but obviously it's subjective, would easily go to the Honda CB400F. Two interesting things to note when comparing all seven bikes is that all the two strokes had just a Kickstarter while all the four strokes featured electric starters as well. The second thing is that every bike except for both the Kawasaki's featured six speed gearboxes. And that's about it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Cheers.